Welcome back everybody to part three in our freelancing and machine learning and data science in 2018 series. In parts one and two, we talked about what platforms to use. We went over my profile and showed how much it sucked, yet how well I was doing with it. And in part three, we're gonna talk about how to look for jobs and how to screen out bad clients. Now, these are both critical skills. At the beginning, you may be tempted to apply for each and every job, but don't. That's a mistake. Um, let's assume, you know, what if you got hired for all of them? What are you going to do? You're going to be screwed, first of all. And second of all, you're probably not well suited for each and every job. So taking a shotgun strategy and applying for all of them, probably not the best idea. So here is my uh, job feed, in particular the machine learning subset. So you can see right off the bat that there are quite a few jobs that aren't machine learning related. So that's just an artifact of the platform because it depends on the client to specify the skill set they require. And if the client isn't, um, you know, you know, the, sharp, the brightest crayon on the box, they may put whatever they feel like. So you have to do some screening up front, read the title, write the headline, just to make sure it, it is something you can do and is a and appeals to your skill set. Um, uh, and this is actually kind of an interesting lesson in copywriting. So when I post jobs as a client, I always put something catchy in the title because I want to get activity, right? There's nothing worse than posting a job and hearing crickets. Uh, that's enormously frustrating as a client. So one of the tricks that good clients will use is to write a good headline. What you're looking for here. Let me just back up a second. What you're looking for is evidence that the client is um, intelligent, that they are articulate, and that they are going to put care and um, diligence into the job. There's nothing worse than working for a client that is just half-assing the whole thing. Keep in mind, and you may disagree with me, but uh, you would be wrong. How you do one thing is how you do everything. If you half-ass the job description, the odds of you half-assing something else in the project are very, very high. So um, I would say that uh, your first filter is whether or not the people can write a good job description or not. So that's your first filter. You know, you were looking for descriptive titles and descriptive job postings. Secondary to that is the skill set, right? Uh, is whether or not you're actually capable of solving the problem. If they use keywords like Python or R and you have those skill sets, then you're good to go. If they are using keywords like C++ and you don't know C++, it's not a good fit for you. So that's how you kind of scan the feed to look for good or bad clients. The other thing to filter by is this payment verify or payment unverified. So what this means is that they have a linked bank account or maybe even a credit card that uh, has actually had a verified transaction. So that's very important. Um, it may or may not be a showstopper, right? But it's, it's pretty important in my book. I don't apply to jobs if they don't have a, a verified payment method because I don't want to get screwed on payment. Now, the odds of that are pretty low, but uh, again, everybody's going to have their own different set of filters. So I tend to ignore the unverified payment ones um, and gravitate towards the payment verified ones. So the other filter are the ratings. Now, um, both freelancers and clients get ratings. The clients don't get a job success score, of course. Uh, only the freelancers do, but the rating is quite critical. So um, I'm trying to find one. Here we go. So here's one where the client has a, a verified payment method, but a pretty low uh, rating. Now, the client should have a 4.95 or above rating. There is no excuse for a client to have anything lower than that. All they have to do is supply the work and be reasonable and pay on time and and that, that's all the freelancer cares about. Do they pay on time and they're easy to work with? If, if the client is uh, lacking near those two areas, they're going to get a bad review. And that's going to be a major red flag for you. So let's take a look at this. 
So yeah, this client has only a 4.34 out of 5 reviews. And the other thing I'm seeing is that the job description is relatively short. It's just talking about, uh, oh look, there's a, a Binance. I think that's probably a typo. They probably mean finance. Um, so that's another red flag. Um, Blah, blah, blah. They expressed their ability to be understandable in the post. That's kind of good. I don't know. We also later want to develop a system to learn trades and suggest trades to use in the future. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, just as an aside, this is a very typical job posting. You see a lot of stuff for crypto and finance. Um, I tend to stay away from those because it, it's kind of... Uh, outside of my wheelhouse and I view it as too volatile, right? You know, the Bitcoin fluctuates by significant amounts every day. So if the client wants to take advantage of that, this is not something I can really help them with. And I don't even really think it's reasonable. I also have another uh, typo here. Not so good. Other thing is they have computer vision. I don't know what that's about. I think it's just a, a, a keyword. So, and we come down to their oh my goodness okay so we have a number of issues here so all right um, this one is good now this is worrisome client didn't respond to my messages since long that's why I ended the contract so this is in English as a second language uh, client uh, freelancers so I'm not going to fault them uh, I believe them I tend to believe the freelancers because they have no reason to lie in general uh, the other red flag here is first of all they have a they gave them 3.8 stars that's crappy the other red flag is they did not give feedback to the freelancer so when you're a freelancer and you finish the job you, uh, you give the client feedback and they give you feedback if they don't give you feedback um, if that happens one time, it's not a huge deal, but if it happens multiple times, then it's very, very bad for you. It lowers your rating, it lowers your job success score, it really screws you over. And these things take, the job success score updates only every two weeks. So if you're active on the platform, and at the beginning of the cycle, somebody, you know, somebody bombs your rating, you're screwed, man. It takes two weeks, and in those two weeks, how many jobs could you have gotten? You know, you could have gotten one or two jobs. It's, it's an enormous price to pay. Um, this looks odd. I don't know why these are, are all blacked out, but there's no feedback given. They have a pattern there, right? Um, so yeah, lots and lots of freelancers where they don't give feedback. Uh, uh, that's a huge, huge, huge red flag. So yeah, I would not, I would run away from this job. You got typos, you got missing feedback, very, very bad. Um, let's take a look at what is probably a good job. So uh, we have one very interesting real world problem. Knowledge of R and Python is a must. They know what they're looking for. Working with DigitalOcean and run cron jobs to store data from flights API to MySQL. So, so they know their stack. They know what they're looking for. That's a good sign. They've got three reviews. They're all looks like they're all five stars oh, but again they don't give feedback so yeah the, the, these guys not a chance not a chance um, another another one here is this so this is a decent job posting where it has um, fairly detailed requirements and uh, the client doesn't have any any history but uh, who knows, you know, it might be okay. You might want to take a chance on that one. Uh, let's see these guys. 4.94, very detailed, um, very detailed job posting. Do they have, they don't. So sometimes a client, uh, other rule is always read the full posting. Sometimes as a client, I will write a catchphrase and it say start, and I will leave an instruction that says, start your application with, some phrase and anybody that doesn't start it with that phrase I throw away their application I don't even read the rest of it um, so always read the full uh, full proposed uh, full job posting to make sure you get all the details um, so here no feedback given they have a couple like that uh, I don't like it it looks like they give other low ratings so 
this one I would tread carefully. I would probably apply for it if I had the skill set, but um, you know, one thing you can do is you can check their profile. I don't want to call out this 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 uh, freelancer, so I'm not going to do that. But I would see if they have a history. Sometimes it is the freelancer. Sometimes it's the client. If you click on the freelancer's profile, you can kind of get an idea. So um, scrolling down, we've got another job, 4.96, five reviews. Um, yeah, so it looks mostly good. Mostly good. So if if I had the skill sets, eh, no, I would not do this because it's just one line. Very bad. So, ooh, 200k plus spent. This is a whale on the platform. So, let's see. So, ugh. yeah, I would probably avoid this. Yeah, no feedbacks, negative feedbacks. Looks like hit or miss. So you got to use your best judgment. For me, red flags are um, payment unverified, not giving feedback to the to the freelancer, the freelancer leaving negative feedback for the client because the client has a very easy job. The, if the client doesn't write a detailed proposal, I don't typically want to uh, apply for it because what am I going to say in my proposal, right? If 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 they if they don't leave any details, how can I speak to their problem in the proposal? So I'll typically skip those. So I think that's about it for the art of 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 of, of screening clients. Now the other thing you want to do is um, well, well we'll save that for a future video. So there's a whole sales process associated with this. Right, and that deserves its own video. I just wanted to show you what constitutes a good job posting, what constitutes a bad job posting. Um, and again, that boils down to how much care does the client put into it? How do they treat their freelancers? Do they even give them a rating? Um, and uh, other things that tell me whether or not they're going to be easy to work with or difficult to work with. I hope that's helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them below. If you like the content and want to see more, Hit that subscribe button, leave me a like, and I'll see you all in the next video.